Today we are going to go all over shapes, how to create them, customize them and move them to a specific location. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so in the last video we learned how we can define text and that's by a name of the variable equals then what we want to create, we wanted to create text and our string, which is the actual text that gets displayed on the screen. So when we are creating any type of shape, it's pretty much the same exact thing. Let's give it some sort of a name. Let's say that we want to create a circle. So let's simply name it C and let's do circle and a couple of empty parentheses. When we use empty parentheses, it's always just going to use the default values for this. And let's now display the circle. So self.play and let's reuse the right animation for C. Now let's play it. And as you can see, it writes the default circle. One of the default values that I mentioned is for example, the red color. If you would like to change the color of your circle, you can simply do color equals and let's change it to, for example, blue. This will change the color of any shape. This works on every single one of them. The next thing that we can alter is the width of this entire stroke. And it's simply down by another comma and then stroke underscore width and let's do equals and the default value for this is actually four. So if we want something thinner, we are going to use, for example, one, and this is going to draw a really thin circle. If we want something larger, 10, and let's also add a self dot weight command to the end. So it stays on the screen for a little bit longer. Okay. So once it loads, as you can see, our circle is now really thick. Another thing that you can add to pretty much any of these shapes is a fill. And every one of these objects has a fill already, but it's not visible because when we hit comma and do fill opacity equals, the default value for this is actually zero. And that's 0%. If we put one here, that's 100%. And when we rerun the animation again, it's going to fill in the circle completely, but we don't want that because that looks kind of generic. So let's use 0.2, which is 20% opacity. And this is going to look much better. If you want to get a little bit more specific in the color of the filling or on the stroke, it's actually specifying both of those colors. So let's do fill. And as you can see, our command is getting pretty long and I don't want a command that is just one huge line. Behind these commas, delete the empty space right here and press enter. Now just press tab and it's going to fix the kind of error that it pops up and do this for every single one of them. So it fits perfectly. Most of them are going to be fine by just hitting enter without even deleting the extra space. And as you can see, we can clearly see that our C is defined as a circle with the color blue. We can actually just hit tab over here to align it and we can see all of the values that we changed right next to each other which is pretty good to look at. So let's follow up with what we actually wanted to change which is our fill color equals let's do yellow. We haven't used that in a while and let's actually also don't forget the commas at the end over here or VS Code is just gonna yell at you but let's do our stroke color. So stroke underscore color equals, and let's do not red, let's do something more special. Let's do green and let's use green D. These are just different variations of the colors. So green D and stroke color. And if you have these two already defined, like your fill color and your stroke color, your original color over here is pretty much meaningless. So when we play it, you can see that pretty much nothing will be blue. So we can just remove this first one out of here and now hit this and just move it about. I don't really know a quicker way to do this, but yeah, we have our stroke width, which made it really thick. We made our fill opacity 20%, which give it the fill opacity, just see through. And then we have our fill color, which made it yellow and our stroke color, which made this outside circle green. And I almost forgot one of the most important things that you want to change about your shapes is the actual size of them. And this is going to be a different command depending on what shape you are currently working on. In the circle realm, it's going to be simply radius. 
And if you do radius equals, I think something like three or four is the default. So let's try three and this maybe pops up. Okay, one is the default. So one is the default and then you can get a bigger circle by just increasing that number. If we instead do this exact shape again by just hitting Alt plus Shift and now just a down arrow to duplicate it like we learned last time. And let's change up the name to S and let's set this to square. And now the stroke width is going to be fine, fill color. Yes, this is going to be all fine, but the radius isn't true. In a square, you need to use site underscore length. And as you can see, visual code actually helped us again. So site length and let's do equals, for example, four again. So once we rerun this, it's also going to draw the circle again because we forgot to draw the actual square. So let's replace the C with an S and let's play it again. And as you can see, we have the exact same shape with a side length of four right over here. It's pretty big and it has the exact same values that the circle had. Another one that you're probably going to use if I just copy this over, move this down a bit and also create some space. Uh, it's probably a rectangle. And as you might expect, let's actually rename this to R and it isn't side length. Instead, it's just width with equals, for example, four again. And if we do a comma and do a height, height equals six. So we actually see a rectangle and let's replace the right command to R and let's play it now. This should draw a nice rectangle with the same values as we had before. There is actually another way to change the size of your objects and that's by using the scale modifier. So let's try that on our circle. Let's remove the radius that we have over here. Let's just get completely rid of it and let's do dot scale. And now the default value over here is one again. So if we put three over here and let's do C, and when we play it, it should pop up with the exact same circle that we had before. But the cool thing here is that you can also do like 0.2 and this will just draw a tiny little cute circle right over here. The special thing about scale is also that you can do a negative value. That means for example, minus one. And in the form of a circle, it's not going to do much. But if we replace it with something like, let's say a star, and let's keep the C name for now, as you can see, when this loads, it's going to actually draw a kind of reversed star. So the normal star looks like this. And when we draw upon minus one, it's kind of like the flipped version of that. You can see that it's just upside down. Okay, so those are pretty much the main customization features that you are going to use on all of your objects. So let's get now to moving your objects about. And that's by determining their position. This can be done by two ways again. Number one, you can define where to move it to, and then you can also set a specific coordinate value. So let's start by moving our C, our star. Let's change this actually to star. And let's get star right over here. Let's just remove the scale because we just wanted it number one. Let's redraw it. Okay, that's our star. And all of our manim objects are going to start at the middle of the screen. And in order to move them, you can either do it right over here at the start definition and just add the move to modifier right there, or you can do it like this later on when you have everything you want defined about your objects, like for example, the, sh the color, the stroke and everything. I like to do it like this and just do star dot move to. And now you do a couple of parentheses. And now depending on where you wanna go, you can enter in one of eight directions. Okay, kind of nine, but the nine one is kind of like a position. So you can go right, left, up, down, and in all of the diagonal directions as well. Let's do upper right. Let's type that in. And as we redraw this, you can see that our star over here just moved to the upper right a bit. If you want to move it more to the upper right, you simply just do star, which is times, and let's do times three. So upper right times three, it should end up somewhere over here. Yep, that's exactly what happened there. And you can do this with every single one of these directions. So if I, for example, went down times three, it would end up somewhere over here 
if it would have been on the screen. Yeah, it's still on the screen. So that's a really simple way to just move objects about. The other way to do this is by using coordinates. And I highly encourage you to use this little trick to show you the coordinates that you can actually work on. So let's do self.play and let's do a right command. Now put in number plane and do a little parentheses after that, because that is something like the square definition that we have right over here. And let's just quickly play it and let's comment this out so it doesn't actually draw the star itself. It will take a little bit of time and as you can see it has a bunch of things that just pop up on the screen and these are all of the places that you can put your objects on. And don't worry, these are just whole numbers. So you can even put things in between these lines. And in order to have more of an idea where things actually are, let's do a quick little trick that you can always use is just add underscore coordinates and a couple of parentheses again. And this will just add coordinates to the whole thing. So you can see that if I want to move something right over here, I will just type in five as an X five, Y two and Z zero, because we are not yet working in a 3D space. Let's move our star to one of these coordinates and let's actually first just scale it down a bit. So it's a bit smaller and a bit easier to see where it actually is. So let's do scale and 0.34. For example, let's comment the star animation in and let's do a couple of square brackets. And now it's always like X, Y and Z. So we are going to put in, we want number four. So four, and then we want number two at the Y value. And we are going to keep zero as our Z value. And when we play this, it's going to redraw the whole number plane again and our star should end up right there where we want it. And I feel like the stroke is just a little bit too thick. So I'm going to just do a free and this should be really good. By the way, you can scroll through this animation just to skip forward like a YouTube video and see the result right there. And as I've said, you can also move it to places like for example, 4.3 and 2.7. And this is just slightly going to change the location of your object. But if you're really working with like precise object positions, then this is going to be useful. Okay, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about creating shapes, modifying them and moving them about. But I still have one bonus trick that I want to show you that I just discovered like a couple of minutes ago for you guys who actually stuck to the end. So let's get rid of our number plane and let's write our star in the full scale and let's actually write it right at the middle. So when we rewrite the whole star in the middle, I would like to kind of surround this with a circle. But when we play our circle right after the star, which means play right. And now let's do, oh, we lost the circle. So let's use our square instead. And let's change the color a bit. So instead of yellow, let's do blue. And the stroke color can be, for example, I don't know, purple. And I want this square to kind of surround the star, but really close by. And instead of just figuring out the scales to be perfect each and every single time, which would take a couple of tries to get really right, you can do a really simple command that is just going to save you a bunch of time. Instead of writing S, you can do S dot and modify it with the modifier surround. Now do surround a couple of parentheses. And as you can see, the first thing that via code once is the object that we want to surround and we want to surround our star. So it's going to just write it right next to it. And if you don't want it as snug as I currently do, just do comma buff as in buffer equals. And let's do, for example, four, a huge buffer. So let's run it and it should be a big square now. And as you can see, it is. So this is a really quick technique to just surround your objects. Okay, so hopefully this video about some of the basic shapes helped you and I'm super excited for the next one where we are going to go over animations. So if I already uploaded it, it's going to be right over here and I will see you there.